I think this definitely would be something good to talk about, which is why are men always putting their work first? Why are men always putting themselves first and not their women? Um, maybe I can add some value to you. I can share some thoughts with you. Being that I am a man, <laughs> maybe I might be able to uh, add some, I don't know, some insight to you, some revelation that may, may be able to add some value to you. So I've wrote down essentially four things as to why I think a man or why I, as Kasim, in the past, have tended to put work before uh, a woman or a partner. Um, and so let's talk about this. So the first thing is that men typically have been shown, and I'm talking generally here because there's always an exception to every rule, men throughout history and we've been programmed biologically in this way is that we're providers. Okay, so that's the first thing in that you have to understand biologically men are programmed to go out and provide. We have to work. And historically, the way that a man's role throughout history has been that he goes out and hunts. He gets the money. He gets the animal. He gets the cow. He gets the... Basically, the man had to go and do whatever was dangerous. Okay? Women typically throughout history were the... Uh, the farmers, they looked after the fields, they looked after the house, okay, because there were less dangerous jobs. And women couldn't leave villages and they couldn't leave um, tribes because it was dangerous, okay? Women were vulnerable. So therefore, it was the men who had to go out and hunt and who had to go out into the workplaces. You know, workplaces, as you've heard, it's a man's world. Part of the, the reason why people say it's a man's world is because it was dangerous for women to be out in the world because men were uncivilized would rape men would rape women and there were wars ravaging most of the world up until god knows about 100 years ago the world just wasn't a very safe place for women so you have to understand biologically the men are driven to provide and so the way that a lot of men are taught they're supposed to show their love because a lot of men because of masculinity and the way in which um uh, I know that a lot of women today are wanting men to be a bit more emotional and to show their emotions more, which is a completely different subject. But let's stick to what I'm trying to get to here. A lot of men think, have been brought up to believe that the way we show love is to provide for our family, right? It's interesting, you know, as I talk about this subject, because one of the big conflicts that comes in relationships a lot when you are dealing with people who are married is that a lot of men don't think that their wives are upholding their end of the bargain. Meaning, men know that when they get married, they're expected to provide, they're expected to work. In fact, if a man loses his job, it is, becomes a major problem in a relationship, right? Whereas you hear a lot of men say, well, when we got married, before we got married, my wife was constantly, we were constantly having sex here and there. We were constantly ravaging her. We were trying different things. Now that we're married, she doesn't do any of that. And so one of the expectations that men say when they get married to a woman is that they believe, well, now finally, because you are my one partner, I don't have to go and seek because men typically as a general rule again we're generalizing here because i can't speak specifically because i don't know the specific person who i don't have a specific case men generally need sex they don't want it they need it that's why men typically go out and have sex with much more women than men do um sorry men have a lot more sex with women than women do so you have to understand that maybe his way of showing you love is through his work. Now, obviously, a lot of men take it too far and they'd be working 100 hours a week or they'd be working 80 hours a week or they'd be working 60 hours a week for like eight months and have hardly spent any time with their children or you, okay? And part of it is, and, and this again is going to lead me to the second point now, is that part of why a man will spend choose his work is because his home isn't peaceful. If a man believes that when he goes home that there's going to be more trouble, it's going to be more chaos, then why should he go home, right? Work, typically speaking, work has been the haven, home has been the haven for most men. If I go home, I can relax, it's my home, it's my cave, but the home sometimes today isn't the safest place. <laughs> The workplace is actually sometimes the safest place for a man today because there is no politics. There are 
other men, so it's less emotional, right? Um, and, and men, as a general rule, tend to have a lot more camaraderie, right? Whereas when you're with a woman, you're dealing with emotions and you're dealing with upsets and you're dealing with this and that. Whereas men, we're very logical. If there's a problem, let's deal with it, right? And so it's actually quite nice as a man to be around other men because you then don't have to be bogged down. Look, if there's a problem, do whatever you need to do and deal with it. Whereas when you're with a woman, sometimes a woman just wants you to listen to her and doesn't want you to solve the problem. And it is extremely frustrating, right? And part of this is, in, in, in talking about this, is that women, a lot of men sometimes don't recognize, a lot of women don't recognize that a man has been at work and, has, and of course has been doing loads and working hard. So when he comes home, he's not expecting to do more work which obviously you know, in a marriage causes a lot of issues because the woman has also been at home, looking after the kids, cleaning the house, cooking, picking them up, taking them to school clubs. She's been busy too, right? And neither of them are there to see each other and so neither of them actually have empathy for each other. None of them understand each other's worlds, right? Because they're two completely different worlds. So I think that's really important to also understand. One of the other reasons is um, that he may be putting work first and not you is because he's focusing um, on his uh, his purpose, right? Women naturally are built with their value, okay? Generally speaking here, and again I'm generalizing, women's most of the value that men have imbued onto women is the ability to have children, okay? It is like you can't replace this. You can't buy it. No matter. Well, <laughs> I say that you can actually today, but generally speaking, most men believe that one of the th the reason why a man is prepared to marry a woman and potentially put himself at risk of losing everything he's made, right? Half of everything he's made, and many times even more, is because that woman is prepared to raise his children. A man can't do that alone. He needs the woman. So there is a huge emphasis on, um, on, on the man in order to, well, anyway, naturally men want to protect and stuff like that. But you have to understand that if the woman isn't doing that for the man, the man will then focus most of his time on his purpose, right? Women actually, in fact, I actually recommend this to men all the time. Your woman should not be your main focus in your life. Your woman should be an addition to your life, not the main focus in your life. A lot of people in relationships make the relationship their main focus. When I do counseling, um, when I do pre-marriage counseling, one of the things that I say to couples is, what is going to be the benefit to your community of you two being together, right? And the other question that I attach onto that is what is your purpose together? Why are you two together? What, what is the bigger picture of you getting together? If you weren't together and you were both separate, would the world be still the same? Or is you being together in some way coming together and having both forces to both collaborate together? Is that in some way going to improve the world? Because otherwise, if you're just simply being together for the purpose of being together, your marriage isn't going to have an anchor. It isn't going to have a goal. It isn't going to have an, a, a bigger picture, right? So when times come, the difficult times come, which they will, you have nothing to anchor you. Why should you stay together? The person makes you unhappy, right? But when you're part of a wider community and you understand that you being together is uh, in some way betterment to your community you watch what you do a man is less likely to cheat if he knows that there are young people looking up to him that he's a pillar of a community of course for some men that doesn't stop them but my point being is it should be more of a hindrance for to, to stop a man from cheating that doesn't mean that women don't cheat of course women cheat as well right but you understand what i'm saying the last so it's really 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 important that a man focuses most of his attention on his destiny, on his purpose. And in fact, I say to, to, to men all the time, if your woman is asking you to give up your purpose, you might as well leave her. Because you're going to become a simp. 
you're going to lose your identity. You're not going to have a purpose. What's the point? What's the point of you being with her? What's the point of you being together? What's the point of you going through all these arguments and everything if it's not contributing to something greater than both of you? The last thing is that he's protecting him, that, that I wrote down here as to why a man would be putting himself first, is that he's trying to protect himself. Right? Now, these can be two ways. Number one, it can be because he's a narcissist, uh, he's, and I hate those labels, I hate using those labels, but it's just easier to, for me to use them in this context. But if he's a narcissist, he's a psychopath, um, he's got leanings towards a dark triad, mm, you know? Machiavellism, Mach I can't even say that word. Machiavellism, Machiavellism? I can I can never say that that for, I can never say that word machiavellism. Anyways, you get what I'm saying, and so that's one part. The second part of that is if the man is protecting himself because of what has happened to him before. Okay, before he's been burnt, and therefore now he feels that if he separates himself and focuses most of his time at work, or he puts himself first, then he's not going to be used, right? He's not going to be used by a woman. He's not going to be used by his spouse. So that's why he's going to distance himself slightly. So, <coughs> but also part of this is having control, right? Some people feel that they can't, you know, this is obviously where control comes in now. But some people feel like, I can't control this woman. She's nuts. She's crazy. When I'm at home, when we go shopping, everything's an argument. And all of us have need a locus of control. We need to feel like we're in control. The more we feel like we're not in control, the more unhappy we become because we feel like everything is happening to us and not for us. And so part of that is, is understanding that a man might be distancing himself or spending, focusing most of his attention on himself because he's trying to protect himself. So I don't know whether that's added any value to you or is giving you any level of insight or anything like that, but I hope it's been useful in some way. Thanks for watching, guys.